CBS Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Snowing about as heavily as we have seen since sunup as the Steelers and the Bills are about to get this started. The Bills won the toss and have deferred. We'll be kicking to the Steelers in a moment. First, let's go to the sidelines and welcome in Tracy. Thanks a lot, Jim. Tyrod Taylor has received a lot of criticism lately, but Rex Ryan told us it's a little bit unfair because he hasn't had his full complement of weapons. Well, today, for the first time since week two, he will have his top three wide receivers out there. Robert Woods returning from the knee injury. He will not start. Marquise Goodwin will, but he will be out there. Sammy Watkins playing through that foot injury. He will be out there as well. But the X factor, the snow and the wind, it's coming down down here, guys. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> Uh, we've had it two straight weeks. We were in Green Bay at Lambeau. It never stopped last week. You can see it feels like it's 18, and I think it's gusting even heavier than 9 down on the field, according to Tracy. And we expect the snow to go on through the night and into tomorrow here as the game is underway. Carpenter kicks it to Fitzgerald Toussaint, who takes it at the 1. There's contact at the 20, and we'll bring out Roethlisberger and the Steelers at the the 22. Roethlisberger 3-0 in his career against Buffalo. He could hit some milestones today. He's already reached a 3,000-yard season for the 11th consecutive year and three touchdown passes away from 300, which would tie him with John Elway, one of his boyhood idols. B.J. Finney starts for Foster, who's out with a chest injury. And Le'Veon Bell, his numbers huge. In just nine games of action, he's 83 yards away from 1,000. Antonio Brown starts in the backfield. And gets the quick dump off pass. And picks up only about three. Gives us a chance to check Dennis Thurman, the defensive coordinator's defense. Deuzable will start for Kyle Williams, who's a scratch here, inactive with a back injury. That's a big loss for the Bills. Alexander has been quite a find in his 10th year. He's got 10 sacks. And Darby is up in the secondary with Gilmore on the other corner. Second and eight here for Pittsburgh as Bell was in a slot to the right and takes the pass and picks up the first down. Quick throw and a gain of about 10. Le'Veon Bell averaging over six catches a game and He's just almost automatic to get you over 100 yards from scrimmage every game. Got to wonder, did this catch the Buffalo Bills by a surprise? The hurry up spread offense where the Steelers the last three weeks have been running the football from Le'Veon Bell in the backfield. Ben Roethlisberger has been under center. And here he is again out of the gun. Third straight plays looking to pass, and it's over the head of Hamilton. Kobe Hamilton was the target, and the Bills were alert to that play. So, you know, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they came out in this offense. Why do you want to do that? You want to settle the crowd down. You want Ben Roethlisberger to get rid of the football quickly, to take care of the rush, some of the blitzes that Rex Ryan loves to throw at you, and most of all, just to catch them by surprise. They did for that first first down. Now Buffalo organized and ready to go. Second and ten. Four plays. Four passes, and this one over the head of Green, who had a monster performance last week against the Giants, his first career 100-yard game. Well, let's do two things. First, let's watch the pass protection. Green's to the left. Nobody around, no pressure on him. And Ben Roethlisberger, a little upset at himself because, watch Green as he goes down the field. They actually got him double teamed there, or two defenders near him. He got open, Roethlisberger a little high with the throw. Four different targets for Ben on the first four plays. He's now facing third and ten as Green moves around. Goes back to Bell. Bell with an open. But then right into a Bills wall and he breaks out of it. Look at him go inside the 50. Down to the 40 and out of bounds at the 35. Looked like they had him bottled up. And he just bounced out of it and picks up 32. From the outside, it's going to be a screen to the right. They love these third down screens. It just 
Le'Veon Bell just swung out of the backfield, and they were blocking the receivers, everybody downfield. This offensive line can get out from the run position and get outside and block for screens better than any team in the league. But the Bills looked like they had him stopped five yards short of the first. Nobody could grab him. And that third down play, so a new set of down from Buffalo's 34, and it's over to Brown. And he's shoved out by Roby Coleman, and it's going to be a loss of about three on that play. Well, you, you know, you're just talking about keep him on the field, tire out the pass rush, call him off guard. And, you know, not that Ben Roethlisberger needs it, you know, quick throws to get his confidence going, but just to get the rhythm. And, and Jim, if you're on the defensive side, you know, you can't sit over and do anything elaborate because you don't know what's coming next. Well, they haven't run it once through six plays. Who's this remind you of coming out on offense? This is something the Patriots love to do to opponents. They did it to the Bills earlier in the year. I'm sure the Bills took some of that information put it to use here in today's game. And Ben is upset that he had to use a timeout for that second and 12 snap. So some alignment issues for the Steelers. Oh yeah, and quarterback was upset, that's no doubt. Ladarius Green lined up wrong first, then he had to switch Eli Rogers from one side to the other, cost him a timeout. Second and 12. the first rushing play and it's Bell spinning and taking this one for about 15 or 16 behind DeCastro and Gilbert and again for a while there it looked like there wasn't a whole lot and it ends up being 16 officially yeah here just watch these linemen we bragged so much about them before the game talking about this offensive line they make the blocks and they get out in front and it, they're physical athletic they can run, of course, Mike Munchak, offensive line coach, Hall of Famer, Pro Bowler, everything, doing a great job with this Pittsburgh Steelers offensive line. Well, Bell has 58 total yards on this opening drive. It's down the time. And that's a completion to the tight end, Jesse James. And it's good for about five to the 15, maybe six. Just you can already see that it's this tempo and what they've done. And you know, I had to think too, Jim, that the snow on the field might slow him down. There's Mike Munchak. And Todd Haley said what he's done to the offensive line. Of course, he has great credibility when he walks into a meeting room because they know who he is being in the Hall of Fame. But he simplified everything and just made this offensive line more aggressive than before. And the former head coach of the Tennessee Titans, second and four. That's Alexander with the theft out to the 40 on the run back, brought down by Pouncey. And the Buffalo defense comes up with a big play here on the opening drive. Alexander jumps right in front of Green. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Amazon Prime. Get free two-day shipping on millions of items. And by the all-new 2017 Ford Super Duty. This is the next level. Off a takeaway now. Ready for their first snap. From the 40. Short drop. Taylor. Decked at the 35. To it. The first to get to him. Well, no doubt there's a difference in what they're supposed to do here. Roethlisberger, man, look at this. The snow coming down. Throws the football quickly. Ladarius Green went in and pivot backed out. Pivot backed outside. And I think Ben Roethlisberger expecting him to stay where he was. That was the first red zone interception thrown by Roethlisberger since a game in 2014. He had thrown 32 red zone touchdowns since his last red zone pick. Second and 14. McCoy shifting, trying to get around Burns. And he goes out of bounds after a gain of only two. Taylor, he's only thrown 11 touchdowns this season, but he's a leading rusher for all quarterbacks in the league. He's close to 500 yards. 
It's all about running the football here behind this offensive line, led by the likes of Richie Incognito, who made the Pro Bowl a year ago and likely on his way again. McCoy, he's only 51 yards away, making 49 now after that last carry from a thousand yard season. Third and 12. Taylor down the field and incomplete with no flag. Intended for Goodwin. You got that series of plays, a couple things. One, LaShawn Le McCoy breaks it outside. You saw the speed of the defense. They can run you down. And also on that third down pass, they had Ryan Shazier watching the quarterback. So if he breaks the pocket, they're going to have somebody there to run him down. Colton Schmidt to punt it to Antonio Brown. Brown averaging about 11 yards per return. Beautiful. Big hang time, but it's returnable. And Brown beats the first tackler. And then runs out of room on the sideline at about the 28, 44-yard boot. Each team's had one handle first quarter at Buffalo. Each NFL team nominates one player for the Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year Award presented by Nationwide. This honor recognizes players who make an impact on the field and in their communities. Congrats to Arthur Motes and Eric Wood. They are the nominees from each of the teams. And the winner will be announced at the NFL Honors Award Show February 4th. You can learn all about it. NFL.com slash Man of the Year. Well, here comes the Steelers after that opening drive. Now they come out. The traditional offense, high formation. And they hand it off to Bell. Wiggles to the left side, and he's got a gain of two. Arthur Boats makes regular visits to the Ronald McDonald House of Pittsburgh, uplifting everybody's spirits there. But he recently even announced he's matching any donation to the charity up to 55000 And Eric Wood has set up his own foundation to provide seriously ill and physically challenged children daily encouragement and life-changing experiences. Both very deserving indi individuals for the Walter Payton Man of the Year Award. Second and eight. Long ball time. Looking for Brown. And he makes the catch with a defender, Darby, right there with him. Somehow, it landed right in the basket for Brown. Gain of 40. Best long ball combination in the NFL. You get man-to-man -man coverage, bottom of the screen, and they have not done this in the first drive. No man-to-man -man coverage defenses. As soon as they get up near the line of scrimmage and they show this defense, what do they do? They throw a deep, beautiful throw. Great catch by Brown. And that's a small receiver making these contested catches down the field. What a job so far this year by Antonio Brown. And he just pinned it against the face guard. I mean, Darby was right there, had a hand in there. Somehow it all came together for a big gain, and that's incomplete. Trying to go back to Brown. He's the best as far as results and stats this year, the best long ball thrower in the league this year. How about that? 25 completions when the ball is 21 yards or more in the air. First attempts first, yards third, and 12 touchdowns, so... Hey, you got to worry about the run game. So many things to worry about this Steelers offense. But what I love is the, the fact that the league is about big plays, and Todd Haley gives Ben Roethlisberger a lot of chances to do it. Second and ten. Back to the gun. Pump fake going long. Double coverage back in the end zone, and almost a second pick for the Bills. Wow. But unable to hold on to it. Corey White. Ronald yep. Darby was back there. Brown was the target. Well, it's a bad read. Watch Brown go down the middle of the field. And look who's standing right in the middle. That's Corey White, the safety. Roethlisberger never saw him. Got away with it. So now it's a third and ten. They don't gain anything from here. They've got concerns in the kicking game. They do have Chris Boswell up today, as well as Randy Bullock. They've got two kickers active. Boswell coming off a strained abdomen injury. Here's third and ten. Stepping up, getting rid of it, got the man he wants. And they've got a first down to the 11, Ladarius Green with the catch. Well, it's all about his pocket presence, Ben Roethlisberger. They give him the protection, but it takes a long time for this play to develop, so he steps up, 
drops his arm, throws it sidearm to Green, and I'll tell you, Green, before this is over, they can, every week, he's going to get better and better, had ankle surgery during the offseason, and is slowly working himself back into game shape. After serving four years as Antonio Gates back up at San Diego, coming here as a free agent, a late arrival on the field there for the Buffalo defense as Bell gets the carry and he's down to the two yard line, maybe the three. As the Bills were out of sync. Well, let's just watch Le'Veon Bell here, Jim. Watch how he goes. It gives a little stutter move. Watch the blocking up front. Marquise Pouncey and Finney, the left guard for Ramon Foster today. Excellent job of double teaming, getting the block. Le'Veon Bell read it. Picked up the yards. So, a second and two. For another option. And it's wide of the mark. Tightly covered there by Gilmore. Brown, the receiver. Yeah, tough coverage. It was Gilmore. It was tight. A lot of hand fighting. Good no call. On the outside, he tried to go inside. Nobody was there. A lot of hands by Gilmore. But it doesn't really, he doesn't hold Antonio Brown back, so. Now Brown's already with six targets. Three catches, including the big one to get him down here. 40-yard gainer, but it's third and two from the three. And they got everybody up. They're going to make him throw the football into the end zone. Hand it off the belt. Goes in sideways. And drives to the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Well, they had everybody up, daring him to throw it. And they run it. And they get it done because the offensive line just stays with the block. And that's what they do so well here, Pittsburgh. Once they make contact, let's see if he gets in the end zone. Yeah, he's way in, not even close. But once they make contact with the defensive lineman, Jim, the lineman is like they got Velcro. They can't get away. That's why you see Le'Veon Bell always making those stutter moves at the line of scrimmage. He just has to wait until they drive him out of position. So they bring out Boswell for the extra point. Barry on the hold, and that kick is good. Well, Steelers early. All about Brown and Bell. Brown's 40-yard reception set it up. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by McDonald's. I'm loving it. And by Intel. Upgrade to a new PC with powerful performance. Yeah, just trying to clear the lines as Jim Kelly looks on from the Buffalo sideline. He had dinner last night with Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, I'll tell you what. He'd say this is a great day in Buffalo to play. He played with some severe weather games up here and played well in. These two are great pals. Here's the run back by Tate, and the Steelers are all over him early as Nix comes down to tackle well short of the 20. It's going to be at the 14. NFL on CBS is now on CBS All Access. Stream your local games live. Go to CBS Sports. Actually, just go to CBS.com well, slash NFL now to try it for free. And well, they've been on a roll here these last four games. And having won the last uh, three coming in here, this includes this one. The last four games, 29-0 first quarter. Hey, offense got this thing going. We saw the defense go three and out. Special teams hot. McCoy jammed, maybe one. Pittsburgh defense without Hargrave on that defensive front. McCullers got the start. And but Dupree moves into the starting lineup as well. Two rookies in the secondary, Phil. Burns and Davis, who got credit for a half a sack on the Bills' first snap of the game, along with it. Second and nine. By in time for the second sack. It's Dupree, who we mentioned moved into the starting lineup 
ahead of Chicolo today. And that's twice they've knocked down the Buffalo quarterback for a sack. Well, they just say they're going to dare him to throw. Here's Bud Dupree. And this is a difference for Tyrod Taylor today against most defenses he sees. This Pittsburgh Steelers linebacking core, they can all run. Jazier made the tackle before. So when he gets out of that pocket, find a receiver, get rid of the football. Three times they've had dropbacks, the Bills, and two of the three times they've been taken down for sacks as third and 13 sets up this pass. It is intercepted. Bounced up into the arms of William Gay, and he has the return for the touchdown. Six of his last seven interceptions have now been pick sixes. Receiver slipped on the route. That was Robert Woods. He was open. Holding. Number 28 to number 25 defense. Five-yard penalty automatic. First down. Oh, my goodness. The flag hidden in the snow, and it is coming back. Deny William Gay yet another race to the end zone. Not sure he said the foul was on. Could have been Artie Burns, number 25. But that time, good protection. Tyrod Taylor had time to throw it. The field could be an issue because Woods turned around, slipped. The football was right on target. But that's what caused the interception. Boy, what a sudden change of events about to be 14 nothing now you got a new set of downs off a third and 13 pick play the offense has done nothing so far running the option here's the pitch dangerous and that's reggie bush who was able to snare it and go out of bounds well we watched practice on friday they were working on this option i go oh i don't know if this is quite the team you want to run it against but they do a good job there they get a few yards but especially in these conditions against this speed, fake inside, here comes the trailer. They do this a lot of different ways with a lot of different people. They run some wildcat on the offensive side. Anthony Lynn, the offensive coordinator, just trying to find ways to get some yards for this offense. Pete Morelli, we're not able to hear him in all this weather for some reason, but he has... He has passed along now. There was a flag on the Bills on that last play. It was on Marquise Goodwin. Morelli. A little fight going outside between Marquise Goodwin and Artie Burns. Drop. And again, the Steelers all over it. L.T. Walton coming up. Ryan Shazier. Ryan Shazier. Tracy, let's go down to you. Well, Jim, an injury to the Bills' offensive line. Cordy Glenn, the left tackle, is out right now with a back injury. His return is questionable. Cyrus Quandro is in place of Glenn right now. Quandro, the third-year player out of Alabama, taken in the second round back in 2014. Second and 15. Taylor in trouble. And they got him again. And nearly a safety. Again, Stephon Tuitt gets in there. Disrupts the pocket. And I think it's Bud Dupree helps pulling down. So this offensive line having troubles. This side, here comes Bud Dupree. Stephon Tuitt makes him step up. Sean Davis and is Sean there. Sean Davis. Yeah, Sean Davis safety. is already in on a half a sack earlier. Well, it just shows you something, doesn't it, Jim? The safety up near the line of scrimmage. They are coming after this pass protection. And they're, like I said once, they're daring Buffalo to throw the football down the field. There's Ryan Shazier. The knee, let me just say, it's healthy. The way he is running to start this game. Third and 23. And able to get about seven yards back. It's Bud Dupree back in the lineup today. McCoy uh, walks off the field with his offense, getting a chorus of boos as it heads to the sidelines. Well, I'll tell you what. I thought Pittsburgh last week played physical. They were emotional. I asked Mike Tomlin last night, can you do that for four more games? And he goes, it's that time of year. They can smell it. Great start so far by the Steelers. Schmidt. Up to midfield. Brown going wide, now cutting in to the 44. And another flag on the field. 
Bill's offense has gone stagnant like it did in the second half at Oakland last week. This team had a 24-9 lead on the Raiders and then squandered 29 unanswered, a stretch in which the Bill's offense did not even pick up a first down during that 29-0 run. They're getting attacked. If you're getting attacked, you're going to return. Holding. Number 14, the receiving team. 10-yard penalty. First down. Timeout. You're going to have to throw some quick passes to back this defense off. So the Steelers. The Bills have been completely manhandled here in this opening quarter. One negative one yard total offense versus 134. And the Steelers right back at it. And a completion for another six or seven to green. Tomorrow on CBS, deck the halls and don't miss the holiday episode of TV's number one new comedy, Kevin Can Wait. All new tomorrow, 8, 7 Central, only CBS. Yeah, this is Kevin James weather here. He'd have his shirt off if he was in the stands. He'd be up here. No question. And we've got an injured Zach Buffalo Brown. Bill linebacker and Zach Brown, their leading tackler. And Zach Brown walking to the sidelines. He's going to be replaced by Ramon Humber. As you watch this offense so far here today, you know, Rex Ryan told us he'd like to sit back and play a very careful, safe defense. I think he has to. If he starts blitzing Ben Roethlisberger, then every throw you got to hold your breath and it could be a touchdown. So try to keep the safeties back. Hope your defensive line and linebackers can stop the run game when they decide to run it. The fifth time running it, and it's Bell for the first down. They yep. throw it 14 times, now run it five, and they got another first. That might have been the longest hesitation I've ever seen by a running back just waiting to see what happens. Don Haley has to give a few runs out there to let everybody rest, but what a job he's done. Think about how Ben Roethlisberger's career really has changed since he's become the offensive coordinator. More diverse, gets rid of the football more, doesn't take as many hits. Offense just more explosive also. Bell, he talked about previous play, his hesitation. He has that down better than any back in the it's, league. Well, he can trust it, too. You know, it's not like they're crashing in on him, and it just goes to show you, one, his patience, how much he's changed as a running back from Michigan State, and how good this offensive line is. Like I said, they make contact with defensive players, and they, that contact stays for quite a while. 38 yards on the ground for Bell including a touchdown, another 42 yards on two catches. That's 80 yards of offense in the first quarter alone, second and six. And a completion to Eli Rogers, about a yard short of the first. Well, Ben Roethlisberger does have gloves on today. Something he said he might not do unless it was really windy or whatever, but I guess the snow just a better grip. Used him one day in practice this week just in case. So far, the football is coming out of his hand great. Last second, first quarter. They don't get the snap off in time, do they? No. And Zach Brown had returned to the Bills' defense after sitting down for two plays. First quarter, it was all Pittsburgh. 7-0 Steelers after one. You're watching the NFL on CBS. It's a winter wonderland in Orchard Park, New York. Second quarter about to start. Jim Nanceville sends Tracy Wolfson. Steelers got a third and one in Buffalo territory. Three for three, third down conversion so far. Dominating the line of scrimmage. We'll go to Bell. Stacked up. And even with a flying bill over the top, they may have kept them back. They did. Looks like it's going to be short. Good job inside that time. It was Coleman. I thought DeAndre Coleman who really caused this run not to work. Look how fast they are to the line. A fourth and one. Steelers. Almost got the Bills to jump. Changing the play because so many people up near the center. Look at this four defenders. From guard to guard. 
Still has got, to change the running play. Still got six on the play clock. Here he goes. Out of the backfield. Oh, oh, here's the pass to Johnson. Look at David Johnson. The backup tight end with the first down. No one on him. Yep, what a check. That's why he checked to the pass play because they were all crowded inside. So the play action fake throws it out there and Ben Roethlisberger, he said, I have complete control of the offense. Mike Tomlin, hey, put, put it in the hands of my QB. He yep. trusts big number seven, no doubt. David Johnson was lined up on a wing to the right and uncontested. Easy pickup, fourth and one. And that Ben Roethlisberger said that's what he loves about this offense. He has so much flexibility to change plays. And incomplete near the 10. Looking for Jesse James. Already all three, well, three Pittsburgh tight ends have caught a pass. They carry a fourth with Xavier Grimble. You know, he tried to throw it rhythm. Now, when he watches this, he could have taken his time and really just set on it and driven it right into the body of Jesse James. And the, the footing, Jesse James made it look like it favored him. It was tough on the defensive back that time, Corey Graham. Second and ten. Then is stacked up by a couple of bills, pushed back by Derby and company. This be third the, and one. Yeah, you know, Jim, just again, let's just watch Ben Roethlisberger as he drops back his original look. It's not clear, but then he can wait for Rodgers to go all the way across the formation. And Brown doesn't even try to slow down. He can't get his footing. Yeah, it's, like, it's like he was on skates. It was. He just kind of skated out of bounds. And yeah. Rodgers... What a job he's done coming in for all the injured receivers. He's got a chance and has really done well with it. Third and one. And Brown, the target, yes. Brown at the 10. Pushed down at the 8. Bumped out by Corey Graham. Well, this is the play you see every day for every team in the NFL. He's going to come across, come back this way. They fake the run play here, and then Roethlisberger throws it to the right. Bill Walsh started this back in 1979, 80 with the San Francisco 49ers, and everybody in the league has copied it, and it's run about 100 different ways in the NFL. When the Bills have faced their opponents with a goal-to-go situation, they've given up touchdowns 15 out of 16 times in goal-to-go occasions first and goal to go for the Steelers and Bell is in for the touchdown finding the end zone for the second time already today Bell Brown Ben it is true it just everything evolves around these three guys and man when they get their chances the blocking up front oh my gosh boy did Darius get taken out he was crunched under he got beat Finney that time. The reserve Bobby coming in for Ramon Foster had a great block. And I'll tell you, there was high praise for Finney from Coach Mike Tomlin last night. In our meetings with him, Boswell's extra point is good. I mean, Darius is one of the best run stoppers in the league. That's him on the ground right there. It's Bell having a huge afternoon of two touchdowns. Not only a couple of touchdowns for Bell, he's got six first downs in the game. The Buffalo Bills won. By a penalty. Still a first down by the Bills, but they got it on a return touchdown called back as a holder. And Tate will not run it back. That was Boswell who kicked it five yards deep into the end zone. All this talk about how the Bills have to win out. Man, they have come out flat here today. They have been dominated at the start of this game. Well, you know what? Yeah, they're flat, but the other team, let's say it. Oh, yeah. They're playing great. And they came out. I saw it last week. Really, maybe not for the first time this year, but just the emotion from the Pittsburgh Steelers. And they came out with that today with skill. Man, that's a tough combination. Let's see if the Bills can put anything together. 
offensively. They run it. McCoy. This is their best play thus far for about nine. Let's check in with Tracy Wilson. Jen Steeler safety Mike Mitchell back out of the locker room. He was on the bike for a while. He right now is standing on the sidelines. It's a left knee injury. His return is questionable. They will not change that to out or keep it a question or let him back go, go back in until after the quarter. So we'll have another update for you after the half. Too. All right, Tracy. They've been getting great play out of the rookie, Sean Davis. Second and one, and McCoy has the first. Shazier wraps him up, but the Bills earn their first first down. The other, as you mentioned, by penalty. Well, you know, I know the Bills. They want to get tired by Taylor. we got three scoops of hoop next week, Phil. Memphis and Oklahoma and the CBS Sports Classic. Two great ones. Ohio State, Kentucky, North Carolina, Kentucky. It's there at UCLA as well. McCoy to the 44. Well, Sean Lacoste, McCoy, no matter where you put him, he's a great matchup. That wide receiver came out of the backfield that time against Sean Davis, the safety. Good rhythm throw, get rid of it quick. That's what they want to do, and that's what Tyrod Taylor did that time. So the first completion of the game for the Bills, for Taylor goes for nine yards. Call it second and two actually, he tries to take off, still on his feet. Brian Shazier, oh. And That's Timmons as well. Yeah, but they, Keith Butler, defensive coordinator said if he wants to run the football, here's number 50, watch him react. And he goes, if he's gonna run, we got tremendous speed, especially at linebacker to make the tackles, and we gotta pay, make him pay that was some pretty good looks that time. Lawrence Timmons, you said it too. He has been on a tear at linebacker also. That's the fourth sack for the Steelers. Third and three. Taylor got it away, got the first down. Sammy Watkins. There's a lot of hope about the wide receiving core being healthy with Watkins and Woods together for the first time since week two. Challenge flag by Mike Tomlin. Boy, that was quick. Let's see, I don't know of any red flags. He thinks the bat pass is incomplete. The ruling on the field of a completed catch. Timeout. It happened right in front of him. Challenging whether it was the catch. Oh, oh good eyes. Yep. NFL on CBS is sponsored by Audi. K Jewelers. For 100 years, every kiss begins with K. And by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, half the cost. Well, the Bills already know the Steelers are going to win this challenge. The ball hit the ground, but it's an incomplete pass. Fourth down, reset the game clock to 9.43. And that is a huge drop by Watkins. Would have had a first down. Now they have to send the football back to the Steelers. Yeah, you know, first down near the 45-yard line or near midfield. Take some momentum away from the Pittsburgh Steelers and get their offense going. And you're right, huge drop. Schmidt the punt for the third time. So they reset the game clock, add a little time. And Brown stands back near the 15-yard line. Off the side of the foot here. Almost landed into the stands. Came off a mediocre performance last week at Oakland, and Schmidt here sees this one go out at the 25, just a 32-yard punt. Roethlisberger is moving in on top 10 position 
all-time passing yardage in NFL history. He needed 205 coming in. He's already got 150, so 55 yards away from overtaking Vinny Testaverde and moving into 10th all-time on the pass yardage list. Well, he's a tremendous rhythm thrower, and it's one of the reasons why in these bad weather games he still controls the football very well just because there's no, it's just so smooth. That way he doesn't slip out of his hand. Another late arrival on that defense. Hughes late to get out there, but the Bills defense makes the stuff. It's Washington at the line of scrimmage. About the third time we've seen somebody run out there where there's only 10 guys on the field at the last second for this Bills defense. What's up with that? Well, they do a lot of stuff. They have, you know, when you say a package where they, these guys go in, this other group comes out, they do that a lot. So you got to be on your toes on the sideline at all times. And I guess you'd say the players are not, they're just not ready. So a rare stop of Le'Veon Bell. Now the Steelers have done it. As they bring Kobe Hamilton in late. Turbo, turbo! One second on the play clock. Got it off in time. Second and ten. On the throw. Intercepted. Intercepted by Gilmore. And they've come up with two picks in the first half. This time, this is Antonio Brown's fault because plenty of time to throw the football. Watch on the outside. Roethlisberger looks to his right. Now break it out. Oh, he's on a curl. Roethlisberger throws it outside. I'm got to backtrack a little there. He might have run the right, right route, and Roethlisberger just read it wrong. Gilmore with his fifth interception of the season and a 31-yard return. Yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's one of those. I thought you were breaking out and steady curled, but when you see Antonio Brown, when I saw their route, it was so distinct. First and goal. And off. But boy, he's tripped up. My Shazier is having an active start to this one. Well, we've talked about him, and, you know, Shazier, I watched him last week, and I go, oh, he's just, you know, he had a little brace, I think, on his knee, wasn't as fast, and... What a difference a week makes. He is flying around the football field. But what a sudden change of things here. And the Bills six yards away from getting back into it. I mean, sure, it's just the first half, but they've been so dominated. McCoy at the bottom of the screen. Taylor. Incomplete. Woods, it hit the ground first. He's breaking the pocket. They close on him so fast. Step on to it. A defensive lineman. And you may have heard Pete Morelli in the background. There was a holding call against Buffalo on that play anyway. Yeah, goes through his hands. I think the holding was on John Miller. Pete Morelli is in and out with that. So. Now, and I've got a goal to go situation back at the 16. Look at all that movement on the defensive line. Underneath they go. And they crash down to about the eight with McCoy. Third and goal coming up from here. Rex saying when we met with him on Friday, you know, we don't have guys that you think are going to be that threatening in the red zone, but we've done pretty well with it really this year, our red zone touchdown percentage. Well, the guy that's caught four touchdowns, Justin Hunter, is in the slot to the right. Yep. He's the biggest or tallest receiver, one of the reasons why they throw it to him down here. It is third and goal. It's on and it's a touchdown. Sammy Watkins. Sammy Watkins, good job, move him around. That time they take him from the outside, they put him in the slot, and he just goes down, 
and you got Sean Davis, a safety, covering him on that type of route. He can go inside, outside, no chance for Sean Davis. We have seen Jim Kelly there come over and give a tap and congratulations to Taylor with that throw. It's just his 12th touchdown pass of the season. He had only two in his last five games. Carpenter's extra point is good. Able to cash in on the takeaway by Gilmore. And then on third and goal from the eight, it's Watkins. That touchdown was the Bills' first conversion on third down in the game. They're being out yardaged so far, Phil, 195 to 34. But one play by Gilmore turned things around here. Well, they got two turnovers on the defensive side, and that, was, that little throw by Tyrod Taylor can give you confidence to get your offense going. Toussaint at the goal line. And tumbled down at the 25. Good tackle there by Roby Coleman. And here comes the man that just made the interception back onto the field. Wednesday Survivor, the final battle in the culture war clash. Three millennials versus three Gen X. Which generation will deliver the sole survivor? It's the season finale followed by the live reunion show Wednesday, 8, 7 Central on America's number one network. Well, you talk about Rex Ryan and Rob Ryan and we talk about their defense. So far today, I have not seen any blitzes. They're sitting back and just trying to react to the play. So a couple of those reactions have worked because they have two interceptions so far here today. The bell. And stiff arm on the way to a gain of six. Well, really the difference in this game, two interceptions, one going in to score. And the other one, which led Gilmore, his interception, led to the score by the B Buffalo Bills offense. Ben had thrown only one interception in the previous four games. But he's got two thrown in this first half. And it's the third two-pick game of the year for him. He gets 25 touchdown passes. Here's Bell. He's got the first down. Thrown down at the 39. And it was Green who helped launch him with a nice block. Now they're going to they're get some of these runs, Jim. They're going to let them run a little. In other words, you got to pick what you're going to do. You can't be too aggressive. They usually are this Bills defense. But that gives up big plays. So, hey, hope that front can stop the runs, get them in some third down situations, then make the play. Bell reaches 100 yards from scrimmage. With that last one, go back to him again. He's got another nice game for 11. And again, B.J. Finney, you may have seen 67 out there leading the way. A younger version of Ramon Foster is what Mike Tomlin said to us last night. Yeah, that's saying something when he's, because uh, Ramon Foster has really had a terrific year and did a great job that time making a block. The defense was sitting back. Ben Roethlisberger says, well, if you're going to play that way, I'll give it to my guy. Foster inactive with a chest injury. Tomlin says, Finney, he's going to be doing this a long time, playing in this league. First-year player out of Kent State, who drafted free agent a year ago. There's Roethlisberger improvising and incomplete, trying to go to green again. Trying to make a great throw. You know, there's a fine line, and... He knows how where it is, Ben Roethlisberger. In other words, you know, Tyrod Taylor, very careful thrower. Likes to see the guy open, then checks to make sure he's open. Ben Roethlisberger, hey, he's I'm not going to say he's a gunslinger because people think that means he's reckless, but he's aggressive, an aggressive decision maker, and he trusts what he sees because he knows he can throw the football where he wants it. At the top, Brown. Gilmore on him. Gilmore saying this week he relished the chance to be matched up. Blitz. And Roethlisberger 
has to just get rid of it. Alexander was one of those breaking across the line in a hurry. Yep, he came from the inside, and this was perfect timing. Caught Ben Roethlisberger by surprise. White, Graham, Alexander all on the blitz. How about Alexander getting the chance here in Buffalo? Someone that Rex Ryan had said he wanted him for a long time in this league. Changed his physique, changed positions. He's played defensive tackle, defensive end, special teams. And now outside linebacker making a lot of plays. Yep, what a story. And there is a flag. And the Bills say that's a pre-snap penalty on Pittsburgh. False start. Number 77. But Offense. you talk Five about yards. Alexander. Still you know, just down. a couple things. He goes to Washington. He weighs 315 pounds. They bring this guy in named Albert Hainsworth. He goes, okay, that's not going to work. So he lost some weight and went outside. So he loses all that weight. What happens? They draft Ryan and Rock Cole. So everywhere. Then he goes to Oakland and... Well, you know the story. Then they bring in this uh, pretty good player. From the University of Buffalo. Yeah. Uh, they Mack. Mack. Yeah. He lost all this weight, though, about 70 pounds. Yep. He said, I had to adapt or die. Adapt. I had to stay in this league. It's the only way I was going to do it. He's found his way. He's already got a pick in this game. Third and 15. In the middle and incomplete. Good coverage by Gilmore. Again, yeah. Gilmore said during the week he wanted to match up. Well, of course he does. All corners like that, but I like what they're doing here today. Stay to one side. When you match up, that means you got to move around. You never know where Antonio Brown's going to line up. He had a 40-yard pass he caught. He had great coverage on it, but it was Darby who was on him on that play that set up a Pittsburgh touchdown. Punt by Barry, first time in the game, and it bounces in with a touchback. Just his third touchback of the season. Net of 36. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Bud Light. Make the right call. Drink responsibly. And by Macy's. Some Bills players recently taking a group of youngsters from the Northwest Buffalo Community Center and the Boys and Girls Club to a Sabres game. Against Calgary, you see Terry Pagula, the owner of the Bills, owner of the Sabres. Let's see what the Bills could do coming off the touchdown the last time they had it on a short field. Very short field off the interception the last time. There's a McCoy run for four. You know, this is a good offensive line the Buffalo Bills have, especially when it comes to run blocking. And they can do a lot of things in the run game, probably the most sophisticated, complicated run offense in the NFL. And it's six. That Watkins and Taco rides him down. But the Bills offense suddenly looks like it's got its confidence going. Well, they, they got what they want. Sammy Watkins outside. Cockrell's playing off. Runaway technique. Throw these short passes. Quarterback giving more confidence and most of all, getting in rhythm. Mike Mitchell back in the secondary. Tracy reported he was out for a while, and Clay has the catch. And knocked down at the 45. This is kind of what we saw in practice on Friday. You know, Tyrod Taylor just catching the ball, throwing it. Buffalo, a lot of zone defense for a couple reasons. That's what they like to play a lot. They, they have blitzed of late, but a running quarterback kind of settles their defense down a little, play a little more conservative. Second and three. Boy, wow, what a hit. Chase here. Who else? Well, how many times can we say it? 50. Number 50 in the middle. Just has such great freedom. And he's so fast. Oh, just goes right underneath. James Harrison, we said something to him last night. I said, yeah, Chase here. He's, you know, he's at knees. Not quite as fast. He goes, well, we'll kind of said to us, well, we'll see. So I guess during the week of practice, he picked it up, finally over the injury. See the little brace he has on his right knee, but it doesn't slow him down. Third and three. 2.40 to go in the half. Incomplete. He had an open man. The pass was behind him, Woods. Well, he was trying to throw it because Woods is running into trouble. 
what the timing looks like. He's hooking up. Well, the football just gets there, and a little before Woods is ready. But those things happen to a team like Buffalo because they're not a passing team. So the timing, the little things you need to, to really be great at it, they miss it. Schmidt. Backs it down inside the five and tumbles into the end zone. That's his third touchback of the year. Just a net of 35. Steelers have two timeouts, 2.24 to go, and the Verizon Halftime Report will be coming up shortly back in New York. Scores and highlights. JB quarterbacking the crew through some of the early action. Cincinnati jumping all over Cleveland. A lot of people thought the Browns might get their first win today at home against Cincy, down 20-0. Houston and Indianapolis, a key tilt in the AFC South. The Texans up by seven. Tennessee on top of Denver. You know, uh, I got a little beef with you. Talking to JB today, he's always nice and trim in the studio. Looks great. Out here, we picked up weight, our winter coat. What are you trying to tell me? Yeah, I, I, I included myself in that. Just to make you feel better. First and ten. Bell. Two wiggles, make it three. And a spin move to boot. And another gain of 12. Wow, they're crowding the line of scrimmage, the Buffalo Bills. In other words, they got the extra defender up there. And they still handed off the bell to get this big game. And what a luxury. You're backed up. You don't know what to do. You can still hand it to your running back and get a big first down. Two-minute warning. Steelers lead at 14-7. We're back. Two minutes to go, first half. Steelers lead at 14-7. Got a couple of timeouts to play with. Bell just having peeled off a 12-yard run is eight yards away from a thousand yard season. Marcus Berger to Rogers. And Nickel Roby Coleman first to get to him. Made a couple good tackles today. Roby Coleman, not a big guy at all. Plays the slot defender. Does a really good job. Good player. Excellent tackle. Second and four. And it's Bell. Patient again. Not breaking outside. All of that for a gain of two. Yeah, I think as the game goes on, no, still the first half, but you can see this Buffalo Bills defense gaining some confidence. In other words, okay, we've seen what you got. They're being a little more aggressive, playing up to the line, bump and run coverage, which early in the game they showed none of. Moving got, inside of right a, here. Moving inside of a minute with third and two. Again, Roethlisberger has time to find options down deep and a flag. Graham thinks it's against Brown. It is. Good coverage that time. Everywhere I looked. Offensive pass interference, number 84. Penalty will be declined. Fourth down. Good time. Good job that time by Corey Graham. Staying to where he's supposed to be. Has the inside part covered. And Roethlisberger made a good read. Tried to throw it across the field. But Antonio Brown got there and pushed Corey Graham for the penalty. So now the Bills get the ball back with about 40 seconds to go and all three timeouts. Tate picks it up on the second hop. And then runs into the likes of Dangerfield and Medikevich. 45-yard punt. Well, let's just go back and revisit some of the things that go on the first half. Screen play to Le'Veon Bell. Got to get your arms around him, bring him down, makes a big play. Touchdown run, just the push of the offensive line. Nice cutback for the other touchdown. He's an all-weather player, too, Michigan State. He's played in, played in some tough weather. There's a 
screen pass to four. And a flag out. Jordan Mills, right guard. Holding. Number 76, offense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Call on Miller. Again, the Verizon halftime report is coming up. Back to the crew in New York. JB, Tony, Bart, Boomer, Coach Cower. Scores and highlights. I was to say, if I was the Bills, I think I would kneel on the football and let the first half in. It's 14 to 7. You can't believe the score is just this. And the boy gets pushed back. Look at Cockrell on him. Cockrell, who came into the league as a Bills fourth round draft pick in 2014, and they let him go. Well, they thought they were might be able to take advantage of him here today. There's a timeout called by the Steelers, and they have still have one more to go. Yeah, but I'm just going to make them snap the football. Yeah, that's all you got to do. See, if Mike Tomlin, well, like if, he, if he'd have turned down the penalty, and kept it at second and ten, then he could use his timeouts and maybe force a different situation. But they accepted the penalty, then it makes it first down, then it makes those two timeouts almost useless. And the clock is set at 11. Gillisley is the tailback. False start. Number 85, offense, after this to the goal, still second down. Called on the clay. I think I'm going to get a job when this is over upstairs advising coaches. I like that. You know, I'm a great second guesser. And, you know, it's just, it's easier up here than it is down there. You know, it's, uh, you're, <laughs> the second, you're the second guessing business. <laughs> oh, you're not? Oh, give us one. Able to rip off a good run with only four seconds to go. Boy, Gillis, a good-looking running back, isn't he? He is. Had a two-touchdown game last week at Oakland. This time, let's watch what happens. Oh, Shazier, number 50, went around the back door. And when he went around, Gillis Lee, quick, sees it, gets out there and picks up yards. But four seconds to go in the first half. That was the longest play for the Bills. 22 yards. And Gillis Lee with another nice run, but that'll close out the half. Give him 12. Well, that was Richie Incognito. Haven't heard from him. I could hear him make the hit as he pulled around that time from the left guard position. Bills deferred, so they'll get the third quarter kick headed their way. Roethlisberger throws for 162 in that first half, but a couple of picks. Bell. 77 yards on the ground, another 48 on three catches. That's 125 yards total offense and two touchdowns. Tracy Wolfson, down to you. Thanks a lot. Coach, with that second interception, you can see the Bills defense kind of gain momentum. So how do you counter that? We just got to take care of the ball. It's not about them. It's about what we do and how we do it. Uh, we were a little negligent with security of the ball in the first half. If we're better, we should be fine. How much has the weather affected things? We're not concerned about the weather. Both teams got to deal with it, so it needs to be irrelevant. Thanks a lot. Jim? Well, the weather has, though. The snow has certainly lightened up from the way this game started. But Tomlin and his team go to the locker room up seven. 14-7 Steelers. And we're back with the Verizon Halftime Report after this message and a word from your local station. It's a 14-7 lead for the Steelers. They clear the field here at halftime as flurries continue to fall here. You can follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. What do you 
expecting here. Buffalo gets the football to start the second half. Down seven. Could have been, as Boomer was talking about in the studio. This thing could have been really a much bigger halftime margin. A couple of picks kept them in the game. Could have been like the weather. They weathered their storm. The snow has slowed down. The field is clear. And I think that's what you say about Buffalo. They had to go in the locker room with a lot of confidence. They kind of figured out what they wanted to do on defense. Tyrod Taylor got a few easy completions. So I expect them to play much better on offense the second half. And again, these teams coming in with the Steelers tied with Baltimore for the North Division lead in the AFC, while the Bills at 6-6 six and six really feel like they have to win out. Win they all do. four games to get to 10-6, and six, and that still could possibly not be enough because of all the tiebreaker situations. Yeah, I mean, a lot of motivation. It, it, it truly is playoff football, and, and you expect to see the best from the football teams. I think what we're seeing, too, uh, early in the game, we saw a more emotional Pittsburgh Steelers football team, and the Bills finally caught on and caught up, made some plays, and got back in this game. Well, the Steelers certainly seem to be hitting their stride here in December. They've won three in a row, come into the weekend, tied with the Ravens, who will be playing at New England tomorrow night. And Pittsburgh will be hosting the Ravens on Christmas night. And then in the wild card picture, well, there's just so many scenarios. You know, most of the time think it's going to be two teams out of the AFC West. Denver's down to Tennessee right now at the moment, but you got Miami's up at halftime. You look at all these records. And again, there's Buffalo at 6-6. Six and six. Right. They really can't afford another loss. Well, as we saw or heard Mike Tomlin give an interview to Tracy Wilson before half, he's a great interview. He had a great way of saying about this time of year, he goes, that road to Houston is getting narrower as we go along. <laughs> yes. So, so true. It just gets tighter. And look what they did to this field at halftime. Yeah, they scraped it. The rubber pellets got pushed around a little bit. And boy, in the end zones, they need to still do a little maintenance work. First half numbers, 239 total yards of offense for Pittsburgh. And they really contained LaShawn McCoy, 10 carries for 25 yards, two and a half a clip for McCoy, who came in averaging five and a half per carry, tops in the NFL average per rush. Of course, that was a little concern that Hargrave, their good rookie, uh, who's played so well, he's out today, so they're, you know, they're definitely short of defensive linemen when you talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers, so I wouldn't be surprised if the Buffalo Bills, those couple runs at the end of the half maybe gave Anthony Lynn, the offensive coordinator, a few more ideas that they might keep trying this at Pittsburgh run defense to see if they can get their run game going. So the officials aren't quite set to get this started as they continue to try to do a little maintenance on the edges of the field. All the special teamers are lined up and ready to go. You got Boswell. He's been bouncing around, ready to kick it off as they shovel now the rubber pellets that came up during the halftime effort to try to clear the field. Well, the field looks clear. I think Pete Morelli, uh, I, mean, I like to see his yard. It must be immaculate. He wants this thing perfect. We got a little, well, all the end zones, we see a little of the pellets. There's big Jim Kelly on the sideline. Looking at Jim Kelly, there was a, a good story that came out of our meeting with Ben Roethlisberger last night. He has such respect for Kelly that when Ben's wife, Ashley, delivered the third child, Bodie, back in uh, this past May. Ben made a phone call to Jim and said, I, I, I'd like to talk to you. I can't text you about this. I saw Jim in the locker room before the game today. He said, I had no idea what this was going to be about. And Ben said, hey, we were thinking we wanted to use this name anyway, but I really want to do it as a tribute to you. We want to name our son Bodie. We want to name his, have his middle name carry the name of your son, Hunter. So the Roethlisberger's third child is Bodie Hunter Roethlisberger. That's a great story. Great respect. Ben Roethlisberger loved him growing up and plays a lot like him too, don't you think? Some similarities, no question. 
So they brought the players off the field. Tracy, what are you hearing down there? The big issue, too much rubber now down on the field. You can see along the sidelines. It's just too much. Guys were actually writing letters. Here's a here's a zero you should see right over here. <laughs> and and um, they're trying to shovel it off. They may bring the tractor out also to clear it. You see guys clearing it with their feet right now. Just too much rubber down here as they cleared the field, guys. Well, you got it basically off the the plank here. Here's, this is this is what was happening earlier. See all these little rubber pellets. Now, what they're concerned about, players running out of bounds. That's it. Stepping on this, yes. these piles of rubber or whatever that substance is, and slipping and falling and hurting themselves. Unsafe. They have a conditions are perfect. Those little pellets were able to really soften the effects of playing on turf. Everybody's getting into the act here. <laughs> so we're going to take a, a little break here while they continue to try to get the field in shape. Well, the players, as it turns out, could have spent a little more time in the comfort of their locker rooms, and they're bringing back back out now. The tractors to go to work here. Well, I guess you sit there and go, well, what's the big deal? Well, it's a big deal. You know, you got the safety of the players. We talk so much about it. It is you don't want somebody to slip on a surface that uh, you could clear it up. Last year, the Steelers had a game in St. Louis that was delayed for about 10 minutes because uh, some of the fireworks before the game set the field on fire. You might remember this. I do. It took about 10 minutes before the field was playable. Well, there was no slowing down in the first half. Bell and Brown. Well, Bell, Brown, and Ben. You know, they make it all happen for the Steelers. What a throw here early in the game by Ben Roethlisberger to Antonio Brown. Well, Bell just, just continues to Prove week in and week out, one of the best in the league. Hundred seventy-four yards of offense between those two, and uh, Tracy, we're bringing the players back out onto the field now. That's exactly right because the key was all of the rubber had to be off the white part of the field, so the blower just came out. And it blew all the rubber off the white part of this sideline where I'm at and the Bills sideline. They say the Pittsburgh sideline's okay. It looks like we're ready to play, guys. And after all that, they cleared the field, and now the snow has come back. Here it it's comes already again. starting to collect. I, I even saw Tracy with the shovel down there. She said, hey, she wants to get it moving, too, hey, because really? yeah. she's down there standing in this cold wind, the snow. Jim had his hot chocolate, in case you wanted to <laughs> yeah, know, right. Tracy, at halftime. Marshmallows. Electric blanket. <laughs> Boswell's kick to the goal line. Tate, long time return in this league with New England and Cincinnati gets chopped up. Good tackle that time. Again, Roosevelt Nix has made a couple of plays on special teams. And Tracy, what did you hear at halftime from, from Rex? Well, Rex was obviously upset with just 93 total yards offensively, but the 63 rush yards really frustrated him. He said, we need to run the ball better. We need to get first downs. And he said, expect us to go a little bit more up-tempo, no huddle in this second half, Jim. Okay, so they got a little rhythm going in that second quarter. Run an option. There's nothing there. He dives back down at the line of scrimmage. Well, they tried this play in the first half. They handed it off a couple times, got some good gains, but the option play, just too ready for it. Four linebackers out there, all can run. 
Look at number 77 back out there, Gordy. Cordy Glenn, their left tackle. That's a big deal. Give, it gives the quarterback more confidence. They don't have to chip. They were trying to help out there early in the first half when he went out. Here's Taylor. Tip, but still, oh, Clay unable to adjust. That ball had been tipped by a Steeler defender. Shea's here, got his finger on it. That time he dropped back in his own coverage. Watch number 50. Jumps. Man, great job. And it's got to be frustrating. Couple open wide receivers today. <clears throat> Drop passes, tip pass. Sacking the quarterback to pass the game. And now we got Justin Hunter on third down running on the field as they break the huddle. That's Hunter 17 coming into a slot to the left. Third and 10. Taylor fires in. Nice catch that time. Watkins pulls it in. First down. Ross Cockrell on the outside. The ex-Buffalo Bill. Top of your screen. Sammy Watkins with a little stutter move. Boy, nice catch because that football, when he turned around, that football was on him. You watch him, and I always think the same thing. Man, I just can't wait till he just gets healthy where he can get more snaps, stay out there for the year, and Ready? see what Sandy Ready? Watkins can do. Yeah, you can only hope. That's surgically repaired foot. McCoy, he is taken down for a loss. Dupree had him initially, and then Stephon Chewett finish him off along with a little assist from Cockrell and Davis. Well, Davis, Shazier, boy, we got some guys really having good days. Here he comes, 28, unblocked. And, you know, those are the type of plays you got to either check out of them, get somebody over there to block him. When you see Sean Davis outside near the line of scrimmage, he's on a blitz. They predicted run, they got run. It's the fourth time McCoy's been stopped with no gain or a loss. Second and 11. Taylor. <laughs> Able to maybe get a yard out of it. Avoid a sack. Well, that time he tried to stay in the pocket. I give Tyrod Taylor credit that time. You know, you always hear, oh, there's he's, he's leaving the pocket too quick. But let's see who's open. Nick O'Leary covered, outside covered, even when they adjust the route. Still there. So Tyrod Taylor did what you're supposed to. Hang in the pocket till you must run. That's what he did that time. Taylor, it's only his second rush attempt. The other one was the first play of this quarter. He has nearly 500 yards rushing on the season. Two carries, one yard today. Third and ten. Tap to the line and knocked down. And Groy was the one that knocked it down to make sure it wasn't intercepted, but Tuit was the one that got a hand on it. Here comes Blitzers from this side. Watch Gillisley get the pickup. He sees him late. It gives Tyrod Taylor a chance to throw it down the field, and once that football was tipped, James Harrison just knocked the receiver down. Schmidt, that's a good looking kick. Back to the 17, goes Brown, checks off a tackle. Taken out of bounds at the 18. 52-yard boot as the weather picks up again. They had to clear the field. Took a while. And now the snow is gathering again. And Santa's coming to town in two weeks. Feels like it's 18 here today. Feels like Christmas Day. Steelers first play scrimmage in the third quarter. Look at Bell. That puts him over a thousand on the season. In this just being his tenth game, having been suspended the first three. Well, they just do. The, the offensive line, we bragged about him all day, but watch Nick's too. You talked about him on special teams. He gets a good block and sustains it, and Le'Veon Bell just waits and just lets the defense separates, and then he runs through it. 90 yards on 14 carries. And that's his 10th first down he's picked up in this game. The Bills have seven as a team. Oh, that was 
two-step move, drive ahead, another five or six. Another patient run, and we saw this in the first half, Jim, just all the different things they could do. First off, look at the right side off of DeCastro, Gilbert, getting down the field, getting blocks, and he uses his blocker so well. And then just, hold on, let me just take my time, and then go. So, pretty amazing stuff. I, it's the only guy I can think of that has that kind of style in the NFL. They brought in an extra lineman, Chris Hubbard. They got David Johnson in there, too, who's moving over to the left side. Second and five. James out in front of Bell. And he's got the first down. Made it look easy. That's his 11th first down picked up. Wow. Well, it's, it's, it's the Le'Veon Bell show. What a great thing to be able to go to. How about the Steelers? They start the game out. Wide receivers spread the field, throw it every down. But then they just change into, well, let's, let's be a power running team, Jim. You know, I want to change what we're doing. It just shows you the versatility, the talent. That put Bell over 100 for the game. 102 on 16. Kind of makes you scratch your head, Todd Haley, offensive coordinator, to be able to get your team to be that versatile. Of course, it takes a lot of knowledge on his part, a lot of hard work. Four straight 100-yard games by Bell, who adds to the total. With another three. First since Jerome Bettis in 2004 for the Steelers to have four consecutive 100 yard performances. Yeah, that's big name there, you know. And the offense spread it out. He runs it, of course. Now they got Nix in there. And once he's been back in the lineup, it's kind of changed what they've done these last couple games. You know, the fullback with some teams is still in vogue. And they use Nix as a fullback enough here in Pittsburgh where they bring him in, he's ready to go, and he gets it done. He's been ready to go on special teams, too, with a couple of tackles to yes. boot. Timeout called by the Steelers. 9-12 to go third quarter. Pittsburgh moving the football again. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Charles Schwab and by Honda hurry in for great deals during happy Honda days our tremendous crew undaunted by the weather conditions battle tested being at snowy Lambeau last week second and seven and a whistle and pre-snap penalty on the Steelers and as I was extolling all of the great things that Le'Veon Bell has done. From the 67 offense. He gave him a thousand yard season still, before he had it. Out. How close is he? Yeah, he's, he's still got a ways to go. Okay. Came in with 817, not 917 on the season, but still a phenomenal well, effort. It's been here today with 105 yards on the ground, two touchdowns, another 48 passing game. It's like the line in my cousin Vinny, you just need some thicker glasses. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> I got to go to or, plus plus 200. Plus, Forget this plus 150. Or the snow that's it's on not, our sheets right now. Yeah, it's smudged it. That's it. That's my excuse. There you go. My mistake. There he is. Oh, maybe he's going to get it anyway. As he takes off inside the 40 inch tip marks the defender Darby down. Get the block two by Hamilton. And another 24 for Bell. Well, what happens? You crowd the line of scrimmage. You got the extra guys up there. And then when you break that line, that first line there, there's no linebackers or the safeties can't come up and react as fast. So they're playing for the pass. They got the run. And Le'Veon Bell just doesn't run out of bounds. He gives some hits. Uh, the leading rushing league team in the league, Bills, was 63. Bell with 129. And to answer your question, he's 54 from the pass. There we go. I was waiting. Got five more. Boy, I, I see what Mike Tomlin was talking about, B.J. Finney. Look at 67. I mean, he looks like he's ready to play. The Steelers always have a plan. When somebody's hurt, they got somebody to take his place. And B.J. Finney, you talked about him today a couple times. We bragged about him, and Coach did. And what? Good job of pulling out, getting the block. Foster on hand, watching from the sidelines. The Steelers open this game with six 
pass plays. Now they've started the second half their first series with six running plays with Bell. And they just keep giving it to him. Stutter step, but just a couple. We've got an update. Huge game in the AFC South. Let's go back to the studio. Classic Gore. Watch Frank Gore take this screen pass from Andrew Luck. Keep his balance. Take it in. They cut the Houston lead to 16 to 10, trailing by six in the third quarter. You're talking about Pittsburgh linemen and Pittsburgh weather guys. Jim, Phil, and Tracy. All right, thank you guys. What an effort there by Frank Gore as the Colts found themselves down 16-3. Trying to fight back. Wild happenings with Tennessee winning. All those teams coming in at 6-6. Six and six. Third and three. It's the man. It's Hamilton. Just, just give this to the offensive line 100%. Watch the protection. And then let's look downfield. The first original look by Roethlisberger. Looking to his left. Nobody's open. But the extra time and him moving allowed the defense to separate so much. But he finds Hamilton for the big completion. Hey, that was... That was... Stoned at the line of scrimmage, defensive line made no penetration at all to Ben Roethlisberger. Back to Le'Veon, looks around, Wakes goes to the five, another eight yards, just going the distance here with D'Angelo Williams inactive, missing his fifth consecutive game with a knee. Well, let's just watch it from behind again. 45 gets in there looking for somebody to block, but just another good read. Mix is trying to find somebody. There's nobody to hit because they've cleared him out. And, you know, maybe on Bell was a quarterback, you'd say he makes the right decision where to throw the football every time. Yeah, that's, a, that's a great analogy. He does figure out a way and waits for it, but he picks those spots almost every time accurately. Second and two. Got a two-touchdown game. He's looking for another one here, and he's got it without him being touched. Le'Veon Bell. That was an awesome drive. They were just running straight ahead in that time. They weave it back, and they have Nix leading the way. Really, by the time he makes the block, Le'Veon Bell's into the end zone. Touchdown number three for Le'Veon Bell, 149 yards on the ground. DeCastro sealed off Brandon Spikes, who's the run specialist linebacker for the Buffalo Bills. Bell had 72 of their 82 yards on that drive. Wow. Boswell's extra point, good again. Well, that'll take the spirit out of your football team, getting it run right down your throat. They threw it once on that touchdown drive, Phil, the pass to Hamilton. The rest, they just relied on Munchak's offensive line to lead the way for Le'Veon Bell. Eight carries on that drive, 72 yards. Nothing like an offensive line with attitude. That's what they showed that time in that drive. Yeah, you definitely saw it there. Bell, the first since Willie Parker, 100-yard game and three touchdowns for a Steeler. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Garmin Fitness. Let's beat yesterday. And by Honda. Hurry in for great deals during Happy Honda Days. They're bundled up in Buffalo, hoping the Bills can somehow find a spark. Down 21-7. Five and a half to go in the third. Taylor has the time, has the target, got a flag out. Clay goes out of bounds near the 50. Looks like it's coming back. At least the Steelers think so. It was a 27-yard gain if it somehow holds up. It was a blitz, great protection. Clay against Bud Dupree, tough matchup. We have an illegal shift, two men in motion, and one didn't get said. Number 11 oh. offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Well, 
Goodwin, I think it was, that went in motion. So they're saying he went in motion before the other receiver was set. I saw it and watched it. I thought it was close. But now, of course, couldn't see the flag because of uh, the snow on the field. So back to the 20, first and 15. Taylor cuts his losses as again Sean Davis has come up from the free safety position. He's been in on a couple of sacks, been around the quarterback a number of times today. Yep. Yeah, listen, this is not new. This is the new Sean Davis, a rookie, number 28. This time he just hesitated. Again, near the line of scrimmage. Every time he's been up there today, just about every time he has found a way to get into the backfield, but against the Giants last week, made some great tackles, had an interception one time, and Eli Manning saw him at the last second and threw it the other way. Second and 15. Give it to McCoy. McCoy step, stepping at 30 and swarmed under at the 31. Week 14 continues later today. Fox has the doubleheader window. Check your local listings. Plus tonight, Cowboys and Giants on NBC. Ravens and Patriots, a good one tomorrow night. Monday Night Football ESPN. Our boy James Harrison, who we had a chance to talk to last night. Maybe he was in on that last tackle. And big old number 92. He's got a second career going in. A renaissance. Yeah, Man, here in Pittsburgh, he? and it's good. He's making plays like it looks like eight years ago or something. Third down, third and four. Bills need to do something here. Knocked down, incomplete. That's Cockrell who oh. denied the pass to Clay. Really well done. Timed it right. Top of your screen, number 31. Comes off the outside receiver, Woods. Saw the throw and was quick enough to get in there and knock it down. And I think they thought they were going to take advantage of Ross Cockrell today, and it's not worked out that way for this Bills offense. Cockrell has stepped up. Again, a player that was drafted into the league just three years ago by the Bills and then picked up as a free agent last year after the Bills cut him. It's been a difference in this defense. The play of the corners, Artie Burns, Ross Cockrell, or Sean Davis coming in as a rookie safety. Antonio Brown pointing, looking for a block up ahead. The angle cut off by Schmidt, the punter. I don't think he's been hit yet as a putt returner. He gets out of bounds every single time. 18-yard run back that time, Phil, off the 47-yard punt. Got to think more Le'Veon Bell is headed your way after the break. Look at Carl Johnson, line judge, like everyone else, yeah, trying to wait it. Trying to find a way to get through hey, this. Get, hey, getting his head down there, I like <laughs> right. it. Oh, well, he's from Louisiana, so it's, this is a little different. Carl used to be the head of the officiating here in the NFL. Great job back out on the field. Right, there you go, back to Bell. Flag out. Took a four-yard loss, got back to the line of scrimmage. Offside, number 94, who lined up in the neutral zone. Five-yard penalty, still first down. You know, Jim, you're a guy that you've said his name a lot today. So we're going to say it a couple more times. Rosie Nix. Rosie Nix, I like that. Just watch these blocks. He's like a lineman. They can't get away from him. Then special teams. You've called his name there a few times. How about that seal block on Brown? And then just let me push a few people in the end zone for my man, Le'Veon Bell. Yeah, he led the way, didn't he? Gosh, I mean, the run, they got pulling guards, tight ends, fullback that can do it. I had anxiety as an offensive coordinator what play to call. First and five, give Bell another big chunk, another 10, and a good block. Here's another unsung hero, B.J. Finney. You said it. We got a great view today. We can see these guys. Watch 67 pull around there, and this, this man can run. Gets leverage. I mean, Le'Veon Bell sometimes is five, six, seven yards down the field before anybody even has a chance to make a tackle. Finney looks like a big fullback, doesn't he? Just, you know, he just got so big he finally had to put his hand on the ground. It's in great shape. Run, boy, he can run. He 
giving him the football, looking around, looking for something. A wiggle of two and a gain of three and a flag out. Holding, number 67, offense, 10-yard penalty. Well, Spenny, we just spoke Today's up. first down. It is your last chance to vote for the 2017 Pro Bowl. Voting ends on Tuesday night. Just go to NFL.com slash Pro Bowl vote. Two of the top running backs in the league and what they've done today. Well, four to one total yardage. Bell. Sean McCoy just had not had enough chances. It seems like the Steelers have had the ball the whole football game. Bell breaks one. Bell's inside the 40, inside the 30, and down to the 20. You, let's, let's go back. He made a penalty, but B.J. Finney and Roosevelt Nix. Left guard and the fullback. Nice block. Fullback. Oh, he trips. And guess what? You've always said I was ahead of my time. Yes. He's got a 1,000-yard season. There you go. <laughs> But in one context that I say you were ahead of your yeah, time. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't in this one. It wasn't by. Uh, oh, but I, hey, let, let me just say this. We're watching this offense. It, it now, the spread now to the power run game. And running back in here, two sides. Gets it inside the 20. Bell with 192 off that last one that went for 33. What a combination. This talent, we talked about Mike Munchak. The offensive line coach, Todd Healy, the offensive coordinator. And you know, I, I'm, I'm going to say it. I usually don't get into this business, but I will. Don't you think it's about time that Todd Healy gets another head job in the NFL? The league that's void of good offensive coordinators. How many it's years out, out. does he have to do it here in Pittsburgh and show all the ingenuity, everything they do, all the packages, and what he's done for Ben Monsberger before he gets another chance? you got to think it's his time again. The coach of Kansas City, and that time they got Bell for a loss of one. He was at Kansas City. Haley took him to the playoffs. Matt Castle was his quarterback. Right. We were there for that playoff game against Baltimore. Against Baltimore, they lost at Arrowhead, but uh, you know Haley was let go by the Chiefs and then came back home to Pittsburgh, when the franchise here, where his father, of course, was a long-standing executive with this franchise, Dad Dick, back in the Chuck Knoll days. Well, he's really turned this offense around and it's it's helped Ben Roethlisberger really prolonging his career, I think. Into the third quarter. When you look at the quarter by quarter, the Steelers in the first and third quarters went from left to right and they outgained the Bills in the first and the third, 290 to 26 yards. Well, it's, it's, it's almost bewildering when you watch this today and you see the Steelers, the way they play and how they can play. This game's not over. Listen, I'm not saying that. But they are at 7-5. and five. You know, how, how could they lose five games with all the good play we've seen really from both sides today? Here's a third and five to start the fourth. To the end zone. Almost intercepted. That was Corey White who had his hands on it. Ben was trying to target Ladarius Green. Over the top, watch 89 going down the middle. He's so tall. We met him last night. Oh, if he throws it to the back of the end zone, he's going to give him a chance. But Corey Wright, White was reading Roethlisberger the whole way. Well, Roethlisberger so excited to have Green healthy. He's not all the way back, but he's, he said watching him, it's like that Lamborghini that's on the impound lot. You can only watch him through the fence. <laughs> so you just love to be able to... Get your hands on it. Slide it a little bit. Flag before the snap. Setting up as a 35-yarder for Boswell, but it was fourth and five also, by the way. Oh, and it's against the Bills. Neutral zone infraction, defense. Five-yard penalty result for first down. Yep, it's just fraction inside of fourth and five. 
And as Mike Tomlin says, yep, that's going to put us across for a new set of downs. The offense comes back out. Well, let's see if we can see who moves. Oh, yeah, inside. I think that's. Let's see what number it was. I think it was Adolphus Washington. Adolphus Washington, rookie. Third round pick out of Ohio State. You know, that mistake, they've had some trouble lining up today. Boy, this is just not good. So now, the Steelers have it at the 12. Bell. It's again slicing and driving down to about the eight. Lorenzo Alexander tackled him. Huge third quarter though. Bell had over 100 yards in the quarter alone. Yeah, it's, just, it's everything. It's his style, the offensive line, blocking, and, it, and the great thing is he can do it inside, outside. And the other thing, Jim, he doesn't seem to take a lot of punishment when you watch him. You know, you don't see him getting held up, an extra guy hitting him, and then they go back to that neutral zone infraction. More time off the clock, and maybe a touchdown by the Steelers could really make this game almost impossible for the Bills to come back. Second and six. Look at this way. Never panics, but there's nothing that developed that time. Got another flag out on the far sideline. Illegal shift number 82 wasn't set. Five yard penalty, still second down. Tonight, a news making interview with the Prime Minister of Israel. Plus, how effective can TV commercials be? See the one that helped end the war, 60 Minutes. Tonight, only CBS. Rex is saying, you know what? I, I didn't want to accept that penalty. Yeah, they're going to, that's, they never. Correction, Buffalo will decline the penalty. I never saw Rex or them, Pete Morelli, he did not look to the Buffalo sideline to see if they wanted the penalty. He just marked it off. So good job by Rex Ryan notifying them and getting them. He doesn't want to give Ben Roethlisberger and his offense two chances. Just give him one. Well, there's nothing that crushes him more, though, than seeing someone run the football on him, as much as he loves to run the football on the other side. Number oh, and they do it better than anyone on the season. Not today. But uh, Bell's at 196. Don't forget, Ajaye gave up, uh, well, they gave up 214 to him when they played down at Miami. Third and five. Play action. In zone. And intercepted. That is Zach Brown jumping right in front of Jesse James. And the Bills defense comes up with a third interception. Yep. He had him fooled. Zach Brown, 53. Watch, he goes in. And look at this quick recovery back for the interception. Great job by Zach Brown. Game-saving play. Several things worked out there for the Bills. Their offside penalty on the made field goal. Now gave a new set of downs to Pittsburgh, but eventually the takeaway by the Bills as Taylor gives it right back. It's intercepted by Burns for the rookie from Miami. Only the sixth time this year Taylor has been intercepted. Well, he got what he wanted. He had two deep safeties, and here's what you do as a quarterback. All you have to do is read it. After the interception and during the return holding, number 28 of the intercepting team. It's a 10-yard penalty, first down. Burns is the corner to the left side up top of the screen. You got this. You go down the middle of the field, watch the safety split, and you be the quarterback. Look down the middle. You th I thought he was going there. And not only was Burns in position to intercept the pass, so was the safety. Yeah, John Dave, Davis is going to be there to get it. No so. question. He would have had it otherwise. 
And here were the Bills before that snap. They were plus three in the takeaway department for the day and down two touchdowns. Kind of like what happened with Oakland in Kansas City on Thursday night. Yep. It goes way against the odds. You know, you, that and just a lot of unsung heroes here today. And maybe this, it gets, you know, Ben Roethlisberger, three interceptions. But we've talked about how about the secondary of the Steelers? I know it's the Bills passing offense, but this was a story coming into this game. They've gotten better. I think that, and, and Sean Davis, Artie Burns are two big reasons why. The rookies are growing up. They're getting uh, important playing time. I mean, how many plays have you, times you called out Sean Davis today? Uh, he's, Let's see, he's everywhere. He's been all over the field. And we know about their linebackers, and uh, they were down on defensive linemen. They've done a good job against this run defense, or Buffalo's run offense today. You got a pair of quarterbacks that combined had thrown only 13 interceptions on the season. And now today they've thrown four between them. Well, Tyrod Taylor trying to make a play. Well, they misfired the football. That's what the holdup was. Mark it back at the 48. Number seven, number four, Bell. He's got a 200-yard game now. Let's go to New York. JB and Coach Cower. Detroit making it tough on itself. Yeah, they're going to get behind again right here. Cravon LeBlanc's going to step in front of this Matthew Stafford pass, return of 24 yards for the touchdown. Detroit in familiar territory behind in the fourth quarter, 17-13. I would ask Coach to repeat that again, but let me take it back to Jim Nance. <laughs> All right, guys. But this is what Detroit does. They're just setting it up for another yeah. last-minute win. Oh, They're behind in every game in the fourth quarter. So, with their score on this rebound. <laughs> another beautiful way in the hurdle. Some dangerous liftoff, but he lands safely. And he's only the uh, second player to have a 200-yard rushing performance. Ajayi had two on his own this year. Bell now with the third one by the uh, second player. I would um, get Le'Veon Bell to the sideline if I was Mike Tomlin go, you know, uh, what are you doing? Jumping up in the air like that. And it's just such a risky play for such a great player. Now I mean, I know it's common. We see it every week. It's it's the new thing. Try to do it, but once somebody gets hurt, breaks an arm, whatever, I just I don't think it's worth the. Yeah. He's averaging seven yards a carry today, and that one is another good gain. Not seven, but you know, Getting five with ease, it seems, every time. Well, this rushing offense for the Steelers, it says it's 17th in the league. That's only because, you know, Le'Veon Bell wasn't there early in the year. They've had some other, they were throwing the football more. And you talked about Rex Ryan, this rushing defense. Rex Ryan, everywhere he's been his whole career. If nothing else, his defense could stop the run. They have not done that this year. They're going to fall for 25th in the league, and they're going to go lower. Giving up two of the three. Rushing performances, and now the biggest one of the year in the league. His bell has established that and adds another three to his total. But two, you know, it doesn't seem like it was that long ago, does it, Jim? We would do a game and we'd go, when are they going to get this offensive line straight for the Steelers and get it turned around to help this quarterback? And man, did they ever, they've gotten straight. Plus, a lot. They got the line. They've got the the weapons with Brown, Bell, Ben, the three Bs who haven't been together as many times as you might think over the last yep. two and a half years. Third and two. Somebody puts the game here and there. Got that three at one time. It was a stretch for a while where they had only been together five of 25 games in the stretch where all three were dressed at the same time. So. Stop them short that time. It's fourth down. They're going to bring out Boswell. Yeah. They had every person on defense up there playing run 100%. Mike Tomlin going for the high percentage. Let's kick it. 225 yards. How about setting a Steelers record? 
you think of all the backs. That's a Steeler record right there today. As well, kick, 37, dead center. And Pittsburgh now ups the lead 24-7 with 10 minutes to play in Buffalo. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Verizon. It's always a great gift on Verizon. The Quicksilver card from Capital One. And by the new 2017 Jeep Grand Cherokee. Jeep free to be. Some of the collections from the Albright Knox Museum, the sixth oldest art museum in the United States. And Jim went out to get a hot cup of coffee. I tried to lock the door, but you got, got in. I don't know how you did it. <laughs> And he is dragged down by Chicolo. Chicolo. Third yep. generation Chicolo to play in this league. Yeah, how about this though? You know, we talked about it. Sean Davis off the corner. He's got two sacks today from the safety position. Good tackles. And then we saw the interception by Artie Burns. Two outstanding rookies in the secondary for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, they went first two rounds with those. Uh, yep. Third round pick was a defensive lineman, Hartgrave, who was out today, who's, I think, played very well, too. So they've got to be happy about the production. And we Throw, but threaded to Clay. Well, when you watch the Bills, 32nd team in the NFL passing the football, they put so much emphasis on the running, run, the running game that it's going to hurt the passing game. You just, you, very few teams can do both the Steelers, but the Bills are nowhere close to that. So when they have to throw sometimes, it just, it doesn't look good. You got to do it in the game a lot before you can expect it to be productive all the time. Second and five. Mitchell, let's see. Taylor, buying time somehow. Still on his feet, Dupree. Oh just absolutely swarms all over him. That's the difference. I've said that many times today. You escape most teams. This is a 30-yard run by Tyrod Taylor, but how about the tackles he breaks? Two, three, but Hal Inns is what's alarming. The big hit from Dupree. That Dupree's had a big game, too. This is another young defender. Their first-round pick a second, uh, just a year ago uh, out of Kentucky. And that's his third sack of this game. Fifth overall. We have McCoy slip through a tackle. And McCoy take off into the secondary. What a run by McCoy to the Steelers. 40 after the catch. 41 yards, their biggest play of the game. Well, they try to blitz or an overload rush, I should say, to Tyrod Taylor's left. And then Shazier has McCoy and then misses the first tackle. Big key in this game today was to make sure they didn't miss those tackles to give up extra yards. They haven't done it much, but McCoy, boy, can he shake it. He slipped through two or three tackles to break that one. Taylor just throws it away, and there's a Steeler bearing down on him from behind if he didn't get rid of it. J.B., Coach Cower, another update. Jim Nance had pressure remarks about Stafford. Yeah, Jim, he said you had him right where you wanted him. Matthew Stafford doing his Lamar Jackson impersonation. Seven yards, they take the lead, 20 to 17, 317 to go in the game. Wow, Phil, your partner can see the future. Back to Jim Nance. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> James Brown, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Thank you, JB. The last thing Coach. I want to hear in this crew. Second and 10. Taylor. Play. And the touchdown and takes off to the end zone for the touchdown. Artie Burns went for the interception. The rookie we've been talking about misses it. Well, 
Boy, Tyrod Taylor takes a big hit from Ciccolo from behind. And he stays inbound, looks like Charles Clay do does. And the Steelers, they, two of them collided, knocked each other off. Tyrod Taylor, yes, what a drive, man. Boy, taking some big hits. I think Hardy Burns just misjudged the arm strength of Tyrod Taylor. He let that one go, and he got there before he could make the play. And then he got a 31 yard pass close to four. Got the 40 yard touchdown to Clay. Oh, and it hits the upright. No good. Carpenter's fourth missed PAT of the season. Charles Clay from 40 out. Carpenter's extra point. Planks off the iron. Boy, they made up a lot of ground in a short time, didn't they? 81 yards over three plays. The total drive actually was five play drive, 82. But that third down pass play to McCoy gave them a little spark and packed up a short while later by another 40-yard play to Clay for the touchdown. Some of the Steelers collide into one another. But a record-setting day for the Steeler running back, Le'Veon Bell, breaking Willie Parker's team record of 223 on the ground. He's at 225, Tracy. Well, Jim, on that last drive, we saw Le'Veon Bell jump high over the defenders, right into the air. And, you know, you were talking about being smart. Well, Mike Tomlin did go over afterwards, had some word for him. And then I spoke with Dr. Bradley, who said, yeah, I told him to be smart. You're giving me a heart attack out there. <laughs> well, it's uh, not a week that goes by. We don't see at some level college, high school, or pros where the running backs, receivers, everybody trying to jump over. And And they trip him up. That's Graham who comes up and make the play. Pittsburgh's had the fewest negative plays in the league this year. That's their 45th. That's the fewest by any team. And actually, they're going to give them no gain for that. I thought well, maybe it was an awesome one. But they do, nonetheless, and they're always, in most cases, able to work something out of it. He's moving in, by the way, on the Buffalo opponent record of 228, which belongs to Ricky Williams. Play action fake to Bell. Sideline route. Brown with his first catch since early in the second quarter, and he makes the move right around. A little button hook move past the defenders, now this including Gilmore for 29. It's just a great play. It, it, here's why. Because Buffalo had everybody up there saying we are ready for the run and they've been getting destroyed by the run and you have the best wide receiver in the NFL some people think. Look at all the defenders up near the line of scrimmage and Roethlisberger the whole time knew he had one-on-one -on -one outside and you got to respect the speed of Antonio Brown. So that, man, that changed everything right there. of Zach Brown. Next Sunday, the playoff pecking orders start to fall in place. A little doubleheader action. Then you'll see Pittsburgh at Cincinnati early. The main doubleheader game will be out in Denver. New England against the Broncos will all get started with the NFL today presented by Southwest Airlines. Doubleheader Sunday next week on CBS. Well, there you go. Roethlisberger with that pass play to Brown. He needed 205 today. He's got 206. He moves in the 10th all time. Passing yardage in league history. And Bell has just established the single greatest rushing mark ever against the Buffalo Bills. So many good things to talk about. You know, I, I guess I want to say this. We've watched so much. They talk so much about the Steelers and all their good plays. You'd think this game would have been a blowout, but it's 24 13. Mm -hmm. hey, hold, hold. Here we go, here we go. Third and one here. Shut up! 
and a timeout called from the sideline. Tomlin ran down the sideline and called it. Leaving the Steelers with one. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by PlayStation. Every day is the big game on PlayStation. Greatness awaits. And by Subway. Try the classic Reuben, stacked with corned beef. Limited time only. Steelers with a third and one. Up 11. Coming out of a Pittsburgh timeout. Trying to win for the fourth consecutive game. Play action. Plenty of time. And now just dumping it off to Bell. Challenges the defender, the heady bow, head on. And picks up another couple of yards. Well, just how about the whole play? First off, they throw it when everybody thinks, and I think they're going to run it. Buffalo's ready for it. Now watch Ben Roethlisberger. Here, move on out there so I can drift out here and throw the football. So, and a hit by Le'Veon Bell. Wow. He's a big man. Not as big as he used to be. He was really big when he played at Michigan State. Two, over 240 pounds. Yeah, he shut that down a lot. He trimmed up when he came to the Steelers, didn't he? Just made him faster and more dynamic. Maybe two more and take some time off the clock. Yeah, how about that? Two, he's, hey, he's going, he's trying, he needs a 300 yard gain and he's very close. <laughs> 62 yards rushing. I mean, 236 rushing, 62 passing. I think my math's right. You're talking about total yards from total scrimmage? Total yards, yes, that's yep. what I meant. Yeah, yeah, you're, sorry. You're close. I was a math major. Yeah, I, 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 I can't challenge you on math today. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned. Got my glasses fixed a couple of minutes ago. Oh. He's two yards away from a 300 total yard game. Might get it here. Nope. The Bills are on in a hurry. So the Bills take the time out there. Buffalo with a loss is not officially eliminated, but the odds are extremely long with seven losses. And meanwhile, Pittsburgh appears on its way to a fourth consecutive win. The remaining schedule for them at Cincinnati next week and then home games against Baltimore and Cleveland. Well, if they can pull this one out here today, I see two really tough battles ahead for sure. You know, Cincinnati, what would they like to play Pittsburgh for? To ruin their season, to take them out of the playoffs if they could. And, you know, of course, we know the Baltimore game's going to be tough. And Cleveland, as you look at that, look at that today, they're losing again today. Yellow, set! Yellow 80! Yellow 80! Here's a third and eight. Darius take a little extra frustration out on that tackle and a timeout called by the Bills. So it's going to bring out Boswell. The game's not over yet. And again, this playoff picture at the moment shapes up like this. Denver's late in the game down at Tennessee and trailing. But you look at all these teams on the hunt. Miami is leading in the fourth over Arizona by a two-score margin. And there you can see some of the scenarios, too, for Buffalo. They get into a tie, and they're not favorable for them in some of the matchups from already this year having lost. Boswell with the kick. 39 yards out, and he's good. Again, they kept Randy Bullock up today, who made all three of his field goal attempts last week, just in case. Boswell, who uh, twisted his back on a onside kick drill the Friday before the Giants game, and uh, he just wasn't able to go last Sunday. Bullock came in at the last moment. They flew him in uh, over the weekend. He got a game ball for his performance. And, guess, and you know what? He got that game ball, and what Le'Veon Bell said what? 
you know, can... Oh, is it Antonio Brown? Oh, is it Antonio Brown? What do I have to do to get a game? I think you're not going to get one today, Antonio. Yeah. Might go to this running back if they can hold on here. But, you know, listen, one timeout, three, 338 to go. They need two scores to tie this up. They got some big plays in that last drive, Buffalo, so... The one thing we've learned in this league, right? It's never over. Just when you think you've seen it all. Yeah. I think is what the, the heading is. That's a good one. Atlanta, Kansas City last week. The pick two. We had one we witnessed down in New Orleans this year. Right. They went the Broncos way to win it. Drive pick take. No luck back. Coming up, the Subway post-game show. Join J.B., Tony, Bart Boomer, Coach Cower. Scores and highlights all coming up on the Subway post-game show. And once we get these 1 o'clock set of games final, we'll have all the latest playoff standings and some hey. shows as well. talk swirling about will Taylor be the quarterback next year got a new contract in the offseason had a lot of years and a lot of money on it but really it was only a one-year deal with some options it's really an interesting thing you know I, I, I talked about it a lot this week and you know they well the Tyrod Taylor his numbers and I just say what do you expect his numbers to be when you run the offense they're running where they're trying to run the football protect their defense the run offense is number one in the NFL. The only way you, you get good at passing the football is to pass it a lot in games. Blitzing again, Taylor unloads it. Watkins, did he get both feet down? They say no, boy, Tyrod Taylor took a shot. It was Davis again on Davis him. Davis again on a blitz, he delayed. Let's see if Watkins it's gets his feet down. I thought he did. Boy, that's close. I didn't see a drag. There's a good hit by Sean. Get the challenge flag out. Yep. And again, with only one timeout, and you know you got to do something here anyway. You're, you might you, as well. It's close enough. Of an incomplete pass. You got to go for it. But you got to challenge it. Let's see if we see that back foot. There's a drag. Oh, it's a good shot. It's down, and it's going to be a completion. Oh, yeah. A great effort by Watkins. Yep. But, you know, let me go back to Tyrod Taylor again. You know, I just say this, and you know, everybody is going to, oh, well, you're just always for the quarterback. You're two years into this investment with Tyrod Taylor. With time, the coaching, you know, Rex put his job on the line up here when he brought him up here to change what is or to form a football team the way he wanted it to look like. So are you going to like, okay, let's start over again with another quarterback? So if, if my thing would be, if this game is over, let's say Pittsburgh hangs on and wins, I would use the next three games and make the game plans around Tyrod Taylor. Let's open it up and see if we need him to drop back more, if we can run the offense in a different way and make it more, even more productive and more explosive in the passing game. You know, you got to find those answers out because the way you're asking to play now, Jim, you can't, I don't think you can answer that question. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field is reversed. It is a catch. You see that control two feet down. Ball be placed on the 43-yard line, first down. And what about Rex, Well, I, his I, future? You know, I, I think it's tied together. I do. I, I, I don't see any way Rex Ryan is here. Is he... Are you going to let Tyrod Taylor go and start and go in a different direction with a new offense, with another quarterback, with a head coach? I don't know. I thought, that's the way I read it. That's just my opinion. And they, Tyrod Taylor is basically going to get two full years of playing experience under his belt when this is over. So it's, uh, hey, look, the league is... 
fluctuates. No question. There's a throw right into the arms of Woods. He was touched. Yep, beautiful throw. It was a seam pass. He was hit. There he goes, hits him over the top. Robert Golden's hitting him as he goes to the ground. That's Woods' first catch. Goes for 29. We got three minutes remaining. I'm so happy to have Woods back today, too. Taylor, I'm accustomed to having that much time in the pocket. And scrambles out of it, picks up maybe one or two. No huddling here, so we're losing a lot of time. Just just watch the play. Let it go. Watch the seams. Let's see. Should the quarterback have let the football go? Yes, he could have. That's one of those things that's going to frustrate you. But again, lack of passing. You don't throw it on some open receiver. And that is Nick O'Leary with the catch. His ninth of the season. The grandson of the greatest golfer of all time, Jack Nicholas, has a gain of 12. I'll take us to the two-minute warning. Subway post-game show was coming up, and JB and all the crew ready to take you through the finals, including Tennessee has gone final. A victory over Denver, 13-10. This one's not over. With two minutes to go. The Bills resting at the Steelers' 15. Blitz with the top of the pass. Oh, trying to get to the sideline. He does. Made a great effort just to get there and lose yeah. a yard. It's a good thing they had a screen on. Good thing they got rid of it quick because there was another blitzer coming free. He was going to completely wipe out Tyrod Taylor. I think it was William Gay. But you know, I'm just last thing about Tyrod Taylor. You know, he you got to learn. they got to let him go a little. In other words, it's so precise, and he, it's always don't turn the ball over. You talk about don't turn the football over so much, it makes your quarterback tight. you got to learn to play free and a little looser and make aggressive plays down the field throwing the ball. Second and 11. Open in the middle of the field. That's McCoy down to about the three. Tripped up by Davis. Blitz at time, nobody even covering LaShawn McCoy. Good job by Tyrod Taylor finding him. the goal of 148 to go. And for the touchdown. That looked easy. Richie Incognito, the left guard, pulls around. Watch 64. He pulls. Gets the kick out. He, he, he feasted on, he, that, on that block. He did. Incognito, boy, he's been a great pickup for him the last two years. He's playing all pro. He should be an all pro again this year. He's been terrific. All pro eater, too. And he likes to eat. I yes. bet the story he told you the other day about the Thanksgiving dinner at the home of Eric Wood, his teammate and friend. Extra point now. Carpenter's last one. With the left upright, no good. But that's just inside to get it to 27-20. They had an eating contest on Thanksgiving Day. A bunch of teammates, family members and all. Well, players like to compete at everything, and he's one of those guys. So how do you have an eating contest? See, you, wait, you have a weigh-in, and, and then you say when you're finished, you want to declare it's over because you, you can only get it once. You can only play the, the card once. Incognito tipped the scales after his Thanksgiving feast. 9.4 pounds added. Well, a friend of no mine. one who admired that effort more than our producer, Lance Barrow. Yeah, as one man said, he goes, you got to be 300 pounds once in your life just to enjoy it. But, uh, but you know, listen, what a good drive by Buffalo right there. And for Tyrod Taylor. Well, let's see what can happen here with Carpenter. All this domination we've talked about, and here we are. It comes down to maybe an onside kick. And Le'Veon Bell is coming in well, for all the hands, hands team. team. Yep. That's right. Antonio's up there. 
Hamilton, Jesse James, see them out there. The onside kick. Yes, he did. He the kick off out of Remember, this is a team that carried a kickoff specialist at the beginning of the year, First Jordan Gay. It, it, I swear, it looked like he tries to kick it. Yes, he did with the, the toe instead of like a soccer style. And boy, if you're kicking it with your toe, watch this. If it's just a little bit off. Yep. Got inside the football, shanked it right. He was trying to kick it with his toe, I guess, to get that extra hop that he was looking for that maybe he couldn't have got if he kicked it soccer style. Well, I know Rex Ryan is disappointing just to you at least want the opportunity to try to recover the onside kick, of course. But Buffalo only can stop it once. Well, Buffalo's got a great victory for Pittsburgh to come up here. Anytime you come up in Buffalo and win the game, these kind of conditions, you got to be happy. But for Buffalo, three more weeks, it really puts them out of playoff contention. I know maybe not 100%, but they're, they're not going to be able to make it. And they got to find out what they're going to do. And I'm going to go back to that. You talk about the quarterback, let him go the next three weeks and see if you can see enough progression in Tyrod Taylor where you say, hey, he's our guy for next year and maybe going forward. Buffalo didn't take the timeout before. Now they will. And Mike Tomlin is just uh, 44 seconds away from becoming the third Steeler head coach with 100 wins. It's the first franchise that can lay claim to that. You, you Chuck know, Moe, Bill Cowher, coach, uh, you're probably getting ready for your post-game duties there from 92 to 2006. He got his uh, 100th win in a game at Cleveland in 2002. And back when Chuck Moe did it in 1979, his GM was Dick Haley. How about that? Todd's father. And the kneel down. Yeah, it looks like there's a second differential there, but Rex already walking over to shake hands. This is the playoff picture as of right now, with Pittsburgh having gone to eight and five on the season. And Tennessee is at seven and six. Indy and Houston isn't final yet. See, I'm thinking they might have to run one more play, as I was saying. Well, okay, somehow they let the time elapse. Okay. You let it go. But the story here, above all, is Le'Veon Bell. 38 carries, a Steeler record, 236 yards, and three touchdowns to go with another 62 in the passing game on four catches. For Phil and Tracy, Jim Nance saying so long from Buffalo. Let's go to JP in New York.